Today, what does the latest data tell us? Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The last working day of the month means we get the latest from both the RBA and APRA on lending statistics, plus the June quarter household ratios. So today we're going to discuss these important numbers. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here is the link, and it's in the comments below. The RBA credit aggregates to August 2018 came out today and tells an interesting story. The 12-month growth by category shows that unoccupied lending is still growing at 7.5% annualised, while investment home loans has fallen to 1.5% on an annual basis. Overall housing lending is growing at 5.4% compared with APRA's growth of 4.5% over the same period, so the non-banks are clearly taking up some of the slack, still above wages and inflation. Household debt continues to rise as a result. The more noisy monthly data shows investor loans slowing, while business lending is up, and personal credit continues to slide. The non-bank sector, derived from subtracting the ADI credit from the RBA data, shows a significant rise up 5% compared with last month in terms of unoccupied loans. Now this is indicative as there are timing and other issues when making this comparison, but it's the best available. Now this is consistent with our survey data which shows that non-banks are indeed seeking to grow their books under the lighter non-ADI regulation. And finally, total lending rose to $1.78 trillion, with owner-occupied loans at $1.2 trillion and investment loans at $593 billion. The mix of loans fell to 33.2% of housing loans for investment lending. And business lending was $934 billion, comprising 32.5% of all credit, roughly the same as last month. So in summary, housing debt is still rising too fast, period. APRA needs to look at the non-banks and quickly. And the RBA updated their battery of statistics to June 2018 today. As always, we go direct to the household ratio series, the E2 household finances selected ratios. In short, the debt to income is up again to 190.5 and the ratio of interest payments to income is up, meaning that households are paying more of their income to service their debts. And the ratio of debt to home values are falling. All three are warnings. The policy settings are just not right. In more detail, we need to highlight that these ratios are for all households, whether they borrow or not, and also include small firms. On average, the value of household assets to income is up, thanks to rising stock markets, but the value of housing assets to income is falling as home prices slide, and expect more of this ahead. Looking at interest payments, these are rising, whether you look at housing debt or all debt. And this is a combination of more debt, bigger loans, and some higher interest rates. Expect more ahead. OK, interest payments were higher when interest rates were higher, but the loose lending standards now enabled people to get bigger loans so they are more leveraged. And as rates rise higher, this pressure multiplies. Finally, the household debt to income is higher now at 190.5 and the housing debt to income is higher too. Again, on these numbers, there is no justification to loosen lending standards. In fact, to avoid a traffic accident later, they still need to be tightened further. And APRA has released their latest banking stats to the end of August. Total lending for residential homes rose by 0.33% in the month to a total of $1.65 trillion. That's another record. That 
would be translated to an annual rate of 3.9% if repeated every month. That's a little lower, but still twice wages growth. So household debt is still climbing. Within that, lending for own occupation rose 0.48% to $1.09 trillion, and lending for investment purposes rose 0.03% to $557.6 billion. Last month, it's a dropped by 0.02%. And 33.8% of loans are for investment purposes. Looking at the portfolio movements, NAB, CBA, Bendigo, HSBC and Macquarie reported a lift in investor loan balances whereas Westpac and ANZ reported a fall. ME Bank appears to be losing relative share on both fronts. The market share of the major players hardly moved, with CBA, the largest unoccupied lender, and Westpac still holding the largest portfolio of investment loans. Whilst officially the 10% speed limit on investor loans has been sidelined, it is worth observing that over the past year, Macquarie, AMP, and some of the smaller players are running way ahead of the market rate of growth. So to conclude, despite all the grizzles from the property spruikers, mortgage lending is still growing and faster than inflation. We have not tamed the debt beast so far despite falling home prices. No justification to ease lending standards, none. And by the way, Don't be misled, the federal budget status moving towards a technical surplus a little earlier, now remember this is new debt, not the total outstanding debt, may take the risk premium on Australia down a tad. But I still expect higher mortgage rates ahead, not least as the banks struggle to fund the fallout from the various legal claims and penalties which are being pursued, and to say nothing of the higher international funding costs. So there you have it in a nutshell. Too much lending, still happening. Not enough focus on throttling back. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. And as always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst of Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.